welcome 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 everybody thank you so much for tuning in so today we're going to be doing grade 12 life sciences the human nervous system but it's not going to be an in-depth video i'm just going to be covering the things that i think are important that and, and that i have seen in a lot of past papers so yeah that is what we're going to be doing today if you haven't subscribed please subscribe already like this video and comment and as usual tell everybody tell your cousins your friends your classmates to tune in so yeah without wasting any more time let's get started okay so we're going to talk about obviously the human nervous system which consists of two parts and that is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord and then the peripheral nervous system consists of all the nerves that conduct impulses to to the brain and between the brain and the spinal cord so yeah peripheral and the central nervous system but i don't want to focus too much on that today nor do i want to focus on the sort of the brain functions you know but i do want to focus a lot on the neurons because i feel like that is a part a lot of learners leave out so they focus more on the brain judging and judging from what i've been seeing from a lot of exam papers and all of that they focus more on the neurons you know the brain too but more on the neurons so okay just to touch on the brain a bit i want to just highlight a certain thing so you know that the cerebrum controls um voluntary movements such as talking and walking and then the cerebellum coordinates these movements so right now the fact that i am speaking sort of in a well-structured manner that is because of the cerebellum yes the cerebrum makes like controls my talking right now but the fact that it's i'm talking you know in sense that is the cerebellum so i want you to think of it in this way when a person is drunk they can talk but what they talk doesn't make sense so clearly the cerebellum is affected in that instance so just think of it that way if a person is just speaking gibberish and it doesn't make sense and they're walking in an uncoordinated manner that is the absence of the cerebellum so we are very thankful to the cerebellum that it doesn't make us look like idiots <laughs> because we would have had it not been for it yeah so that's what i just wanted to highlight on the brain because i know you guys know that i was like other functions i know that you guys know this so i'm not going to dwell too much on that okay so now the neurons i love the neurons and with the neurons i'd like you to know that there are six different types of classifications three are according to structure and three are according to function so the three that are according to structure would be unipolar neurons bipolar neurons and multipolar neurons. okay so i'm just gonna draw a rough sketch of the what i mean so as i said we're talking about bi unipolar bipolar and multipolar so a multipolar neurons has many outgrowths and that is usually um if you think about okay this is a very rough sketch extremely rough you know <laughs> these are the dendrites that's the cell body and okay yeah <laughs> very rough sketch this as you know is a in, according to function it's a motor neuron but when we talk about a multipolar neuron we would be referring to something like this because it has many outgrowths which is a lot of dendrites and then it has one axon so yeah a multipolar neuron has many outgrowths and then a bipolar neuron has two outgrowths so this would be the cell body and then yeah something like that mm -mm -mm. Okay, guys, just, just look in your textbooks for like a more professional, proper picture. 
but yeah that is a bipolar neuron it has two outgrowths hence bi one dendrites and one axon and then there's a unipolar um neuron and that one has one outgrowth branches into two that is a myelin sheath by the way very rough sketch so yeah unipolar one outgrowth that branches in two two so a multipolar and a unipolar neuron like those two are very common uh bipolar neurons aren't very common especially in adults they're mostly found in the light sensitive areas of the eye so yeah but then a multipolar neuron is i mean as a, a motor neuron is a multipolar neuron and an inter inter neuron is a multipolar neuron and then a unipolar neuron is the sensory neuron so if we if we if the question says um give the three neurons according to their structure then you're going to you're going to say multipolar bipolar unipolar and then if they want you to draw it you're going to draw it obviously better than me and you're going to label but if it says give the three neurons according to their function then you're going to speak of a sensory neuron an interneuron and a motor neuron <laughs> yeah sorry about that so sometimes instead of saying maybe a sensory neuron or a motor neuron the examiner will say what is the function of the efferent and efferent with an e in this case efferent the efferent is also known as the motor neuron and the reason for that just think of e the e for exit exit so the nerve impulse sort of leaves the brain it is coming from the brain to the effector so the efferent is the motor neuron and the afferent You guessed it! Is the sensory neuron because it is going to the brain. The impulse is going to the brain. A for first. So it first goes to the brain. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Anyways, uh, yeah, I think that is what I wanted to cover. Okay, so we're going to go into the autonomic nervous system just for a bit, just, just touching on it. So what I, okay, what you need to know, obviously, is that there's two divisions. It's the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division. How I used to remember this, because it was a bit confusing for me, is that the sympathetic division is when your body feels sorry for you. So, you know, when you're sympathizing with someone, you know, you kind of feel sorry with them. And, you know, so that's how I remember it. It's your body that's feeling sorry for you. You know and protecting you from danger okay it's not actually the case but just think of it like that so the sympathetic division is the one that sort of does um the whole fight or flight thing so when you're in danger it's like oh my word your eyes are now dilated your heart rate starts going up your blood pressure increases you start running you know all of those things that is the sympathetic division your body is protecting you from danger and then there is the parasympathetic division again how you used to think of it is if someone is you know paralyzed there's certain things that are inhibited that they cannot do and the parasympathetic division inhibits whatever the sympathetic division sort of raised so now the heart rate will go back down because of the parasympathetic division so they are antagonistic you know yeah that's how i remembered it just wanted to touch on that and it's question time i like questions because you can know the work but if you can't answer the questions then you won't get good marks and what's the point so yeah okay well learning is good but you want good marks too so yeah let's do the question okay so it is question time and we're going to be doing question three okay 
So study the drawings of the neurons below and answer the following questions. One, identify the neurons labeled A and B respectively based on one, their function. We just covered this right now. So A, based on its function, is a sensory neuron and B, based on its function, is a motor neuron. And in 3.1.2, based on the number of upgrowth slash nerve fibers projecting from the cell body, A would be a unipolar neuron and then B would be a multipolar neuron based on the projections. As you can see on B, there are a lot of um, outgrowths in the sense that there's a lot of dendrites and then there's one axon and then with A, there's one outgrowth that branched into two as you can see yeah here yeah, it branched into two okay 3.2 which neuron a or b is referred to as an efferent neuron give a reason for your answers efferent exit effector what things have to do with that the motor neuron and the reason for that is because the efferent neuron is the one that um transmits the impulse from the central nervous system to the effectors so that is why i say that okay we're not going to do the rest because it's labeling and i know you guys know that okay so now we're going to be doing question nine i even put a star next to it because it is so important reflex arcs and a reflex action is a very important component because it protects us from a lot of danger you know so yeah anyways let's start with that define the concept reflex arc okay so a reflex arc is in simple terms before i even like define it properly it's think of it as the road so the reflex arc is the pathway along which the nerve impulse is carried you know and then the reflex action which is the next question it is a response it's a quick automatic response in in results of a stimulus yeah so if you think of the reflex arc think of it as the noun think of it as a road and then the action is the verb it's the actual thing that happens you know when you are responding to stimuli like in this instance a uh, flame yeah candle burning yeah so yeah okay in the reflex arc above Name the stimulus, receptor, and effect. I'm just going to do that all at once. The stimulus is the heat of the candle. And then the receptor is the sensory neurons that are on the skin. Those are the ones that detect that, hey, it's hot now. So those are the receptors. And then the effectors are the muscles of the hand. They are the ones that are going to move the hand away. So that is the effector. Describe and give an example of natural and learned reflexes. So a natural uh, reflex is one that you did not learn. For example, blinking. A baby, like a baby that was just born yesterday, okay, not yesterday, but a little baby <laughs> can blink. No one had to teach the baby how to blink. You know, that is a natural reflex. If you put your hand in front of a baby's eye, they will blink. They didn't have to learn that. A learned reflex is walking, running, you know, you had to learn that you didn't you weren't just you didn't come to earth and know how to do all of those things identify parts numbered one to twelve i trust you guys you guys know this <laughs> yeah um because i don't want to take up too much time and then 9.6 i love this question so much an injury occurs explain which neuron is damaged and what the effect will be if the injury takes place at x so if the injury takes place at X, the person will not be able to feel that it is hot. And the problem with that is the person's hand will burn because they can't feel the pain. So that is the problem. They can't do anything about it because they do not feel the pain. And then if the injury takes place at Y, it's so sad because you'll be able to feel the pain, but you won't be able to do anything about it because you can't react, you know? so yeah that is in simple terms what will happen okay so yeah that is that is it for today thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for watching and again as i said in the beginning 
it is not covering all the aspects of the human nervous system but if you do have any questions please feel free to ask comment you can send me a message on instagram you know anyway we can talk and you got this you're going to kill this chapter anyways all of the best and bye ladies